Now, so. when you were in Alberta, you went back to that place that you were talking about on the first podcast we ever did, where you had that encounter where you shot that elk that was just outside of that wolf den. Yeah. And the wolves tried to claim the elk. And yeah. You guys had a shoot your way out of there. <laughs> yeah. That is a fucking crazy story. What was it like to be back there again? Um, it was, what was strange about it is while we were there, uh, I actually found that they were back in that area. Um, there was some fresh tracks and then we heard one howl like during that thing. So it was almost like, it was a little bit weird because, um, did you guys bring extra bullets this time? <laughs> we only had my bow this time. I'm sending you this, Jamie. Oh, Jesus. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the thing that, um, the thing that was, that's always kind of creeped me out a little bit was just, it was, I felt like I had like a kind of a personal connection with that alpha male because the way, you know, he came in at the very end because he wanted to know what the heck had taken out three of his pack. He wanted like, it's almost like he's like, I know we're getting out of here, but I want to see this for myself because, you know, they were close enough, but I don't think they could totally see us. Yeah, There's there it the is. Bear. So as that was going away, um, it looked yeah. like a grizzly. Yeah, it does look like a brown or a black bear though in the nose. Yep. See how the face is more narrow. So yeah. And then the claws too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, which like on the right foot, the claw looks more like a black bear. On the left foot, there was some grass there that made it a little bit strange. But um, when that alpha male came in to kind of, you know, I think he just wanted to know, okay, what's caused all this this stuff so you know i looked at i looked him in the face and just pretty much said i'm gonna shoot you in the face um i always every time i go back in that area i'm like you know if this old sucker is walking around he knows my smell he's probably gonna be like there's Do you think that he remembers him? yeah i personally they are smart i could picture him remembering it and saying oh okay this, I owe this dude. I owe this dude. <laughs> I'm gonna make him into a hairy turd on the side of. <laughs> yeah, I sent you that uh, that wolf, <laughs> that big wolf shit that had porcupine quills all yeah, over it. Yeah, I put that on Instagram. It's funny how many people are like, that he, that is not porcupine quills. It's like, listen, people, I, I'm in the outdoors 200 days, probably a year, and. If there's porcupine quills coming out of a pile of shit, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. It's hard to tell from a photo. Yeah. But if you see, pull, it's on my Instagram, <laughs> oh, Jamie. Great. Here we go. It's a, a pile of shit with porcupine <laughs> quills in it. Can you imagine how goddamn hungry you have to be to be eating porcupine quills I don't, and swallow I think them. a wolf's that tough. He doesn't care. It's like a bear. <sighs> Look at how many bears just will just go head first into a pile of ant like a fire ant bed or a yeah. or a wasp nest yeah like yellow jackets there it is make that a little bigger please down in the bottom you can see some nice quills yeah <laughs> yeah so people go that's hair yeah there is there is porcupine hair in there correct but those are also quills <laughs> there's there's a couple of blood drops up there Oof. yeah that needs some prep h uh, owie <laughs> yeah they're they're beasts they're beasts that is, you know, I th I think I think their intelli their intelligence level is is super high. I think a lot of, you know, the more you're in the outdoors and you experience things, demeanors and their uh, their ability to survive. You know, you look at a one of the you look at an old grizzly that's been in those woods for 20 years. Think of the experience level that thing has surviving every single day. Mm. I mean, every day just. Maybe making a slight mistake, slipping up a little bit, almost getting jacked by another grizzly, and then you're like, "Oh, yep, I know not to do this. I know not to do that." I mean, their their intel their intelligence level and their ability to function is extremely high. And and wolves are, I mean, arguably wolves probably get shot less than probably any of the other animals. I mean, they're in they are incredibly smart. So yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it, you know. It was um and they 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 were very after that, they were very um intent in that area for people to they put up some pretty big bounties on the wolves and they really went after them and and knocked those herds down quite a bit because 
there was very few mule deer, like very few mule deer. You'd hardly see a doe and a fawn. They had to cut the number of tags way down. Uh, elk, as soon as wolves will like howl at night, if a pack moves into an area and they howl, like calling elk is just non-existent. They just, everything's just like, don't say nothing because, you know, they're here. Um, so, yeah, I think I think them thinning them down was, was very relevant and since then which was quite a while ago um the numbers of like elk and moose i like this past year i saw way more moose than i've seen um i think they're really hard on moose fawns um and yeah i mean moose muleys whitetails i saw way more animals this year uh than in the past up there and i think it's just because that moose number or the wolf number was just much lower um, but there was, like I said, there was still sign that there was some in the area, just nothing like several years ago when I was there. It, it was, you know, it was, even I would say as much as I appreciate balance in nature, it was excessive. And it's getting that way now, like even in Wisconsin. I remember I was talking to a friend of mine um, up in an area I used to live up by, kind of in the La Crosse area, I actually lived a little northeast of La Crosse by a small town called Cataract. And there was a few times where there were some wolf spottings. Um, there's a big military base here called Fort McCoy. And I lived up on the northern side of the base, um, what was called the impact area. They kind of shot test rounds over and they kind of, I don't know, went off there or whatever. But there was an incredible number of, like, deer and things that were in there. So, you know, kind of the rumor was that they had introduced wolves into their timber wolves to let to kind of thin down some of those numbers. Well, now it's to the point where the amount of people I know in Wisconsin that see wolves is just rapidly increasing. And obviously when that happens, you know, they eat stuff. I mean, wolves don't mess around. They take stuff down. And sometimes it's just strange. You don't understand the balance of um, of why there's an introduction to something that, you know, has the possibility to just take over. You know, it's it's strange. Well, it is, but it's also there needs to be some sort of balance. You yeah. don't want the animals overpopulating, and you do want some sort of a balance between predator and prey. But the real problem becomes when people don't want to manage the predators. Right. They only want they they want nature to short, sort itself out. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't really work that way, though. Yeah. I mean, it just people need to understand like if you do like deer and you like moose and you like all these other animals you can't have too many wolves you Prey can't have animals. too many yeah. yeah you can't have too many grizzlies because if you do you're going to have very few of those other animals you're not going to see them they're going to get wiped out